Welcome back. Time to look at some scores from the Xfinity Sports Desk. We will start with the Penguins winning their fifth in a row tonight. They beat Dallas 4-2 to two in a game where Dallas was actually out in front first and then the Penguins score a couple late in the second period. Uh, Jared McCain gets a tip in and tied the game at one. And then Chris Letang with probably one of the most Chris Letang goals we'll ever see made it 2-1 pens. Patrick Hornquist to flex one in later on doing what he does all the time. That made it 3-1 after Dallas cut it to 3-2. to two. Chris Letang adds a, an empty netter, his fourth of the season. Penn's going to beat Dallas 4-2. to two. They've got Vegas coming into town tomorrow, another back-to-back, -back, and that's three games in four days for the Pens. But they did get a lift with Jarrett McCann being back in the lineup after missing a game with an injury. He comes back, adds a goal, Pens get a win. We talked about it just a few moments ago. Pitt holds on in Syracuse. They go on the road. They beat Syracuse 27 to 20 couple touchdown passes for Kenny Pickett as Pitt's defense got challenged in the second half by Syracuse after leading 24 to 6, but they're able to hold on and get the 27 to 20 win. Pitt now 5 and 2 on the season. Talking some high school football here. Peters Township and Bethel Park. That was our Honda game of the week. You watched that game right here, or hopefully you watched it here on Pittsburgh CW. Peters Township gets the win over Bethel Park on the road. 30 to 7 is the final score. And I got a special score for our guest here. Paul Zeiss, Penn Trafford beating Hampton Paul, 56 to 7. I mean, are you surprised? Congratulations. I'm are not. you surprised? Shout out to, shout out to Coach Ruane. Uh -huh. the, Penn, uh, the Penn Trafford Warriors are rolling, baby. Yes, they are. Yes, uh -huh. they are. They're rolling. It's, it's, a, it's a crash course. It's, it's, it's a collision course between them and Gateway down at the, uh, I don't even know. Where's the 5A? Is it, the, is it at Heinz Field or is it at Norwin or is it? I believe it's at another site. Yeah. But, um, we will see Gateway McKeesport next week right here on Pittsburgh yeah. CW. Well, so. you know what? We'll they're, all, good look at them. they're all playing for second, baby. Pretty. Now, now to, <laughs> to your point, Gateway beats Connellsville tonight 48-7. to uh, McKeesport beating Franklin Regional at Franklin Regional 31 to 14. They got to do something, I'm telling you. They got to do something with these classifications. And I know they're talking about shrinking yeah. it again, but boy, every week I sit here on Friday night and look at that little ticker we have at the bottom there, and it just seems like it's blowout after blowout after blowout. And it's like that in the first two weeks of the playoffs, it's, too. It's incredible. It's, it's like, you know, there's a few close games, but. You know, it's you. You look at all of these games for the most part. You see, sixty-one to six, There's a forty-four of those. to sixteen, forty-eight to thirteen. There I mean, go. fifty-five to twenty. You know what I'm saying? It just gets ridiculous. You're not wrong. In the meantime, we we have highlights for a couple of those games. Check those out coming up at eleven. In the meantime, let's go to the phone lines: four one two five seven five twenty six hundred on the board of some board hotline. We start. We will start with Brad in Duncansville. Brad, you're on the nightly sports call. Hi, Josh. How, how you doing, how Brad? You guys? Good, good, thanks. Um, I have a Steeler comment and a Penguin, and a, or not a Penguin, a Pirate question for you. All right, let's go. Okay, my my Penguin comment is I really like Sam Lafferty, and I would like to see him stick around with the team. And do you think the Pirates will hang on to GM Neil Huntington at, at, after this year? And if, if it doesn't go as planned, are they going to go out and get another GM? They're going to hang on to him. Because if they were going to fire him, they would have done it by now. They'd have done him when they fired him. I think he means if they go, if they have another bad year oh, next year. Oh, you mean, because I thought you said after this yeah, year. This but year, after next year? I think they would fire him. That's a different him after next year. If it doesn't go year, well, so. because then they would only owe him really one year. And they would have, you know, they're not getting rid of him and Hurdle together. They're not paying two guys two years. And I you're think, out of people to blame. Right. I think if next year doesn't go well for them. I think he will be fired, yes. I, I agree with that. And to, to Brad's point about Lafferty, I like that whole bottom line. Those, those kids together, that is just fun. It, you, they almost set up base camp. You know, it's interesting to me. It. What's interesting to me is what are they going to do? When everyone gets healthy, a lot of these guys are – here's the thing. If you watch the Penguins play, they know they're shorthanded. They know they've got a bunch of young guys playing, mm -hmm. and they're all playing very responsible – defensively. Yes. They're playing systematic hockey. They're doing the things that they hate to do when they've got like guys like Malkin out there. And it's funny, you got to play Malcolm when he comes back. You've got to put all these guys back in the lineup. Yep. But are they going to go back to that super sloppy, you know what I mean? Let's just throw the puck all over the place and see if we can win games eight to seven hockey, which they're not good enough to play that way anymore and win. Right. So the rest, of the, the rest of the league can do that, too. Right. And they, and they don't have the depth that they used to have. So it's going to be interesting to see when they come back, are those guys going to come in and the guys that are playing now are going to say, listen, that era of Penguins hockey is over. We're playing a new way here and we're playing really, you know, smart defensively. You know, we're, we're doing a lot of the uh, things that you do in order to win 
games in the, in the National Hockey League now? It's going to be interesting to see. Chris Letang, I thought, had a good word to describe it earlier in the week. He said these young guys play hungry. Hmm? I thought that was really something that stuck out. They also, you know what? He said they play with a lot of intent. And they also don't turn the puck over a zillion times in their own end. Which they're trying to make, Yes, when they're not trying to make plays that yeah. aren't there to be made. Agreed. And they, you know, and, they, you know, and, and they actually, when they get down in the other zone, they throw the puck at the net instead of trying to make six pinpoint passes to try and score. I mean, there's a lot you like about it. And right. it's like when these other guys come back, yeah, you're going to have to play them. But are you going to go back to playing the way that hasn't worked the last few years? Or are you going to say, hey, you know what? And the thing about it is the Blues just won a Stanley Cup playing some kind of boring hockey. And, but they were very responsible very defensively. Responsible. Yep. They made you beat them. They didn't make mistakes. And they and, were physical when they needed to. Right. And in the offensive zone, they were opportunistic. And, and, and so you can win the hockey game. I mean, there's this idea that you have to go 100 miles an hour to win hockey games. I think last year, sort of the pendulum swung back a little bit the other way. So, you know, the Penguins have some decisions to make when these guys come back. Are they going to play the right way or are they going to go back to playing the, you know, goofy way they like to play? We'll see about that. Let's go back to the phone lines. Let's go to Mike in Bethel Park. Mike, you're on the nightly sports call. Yeah, hey, guys. How you doing? Good. How you doing? Good. Hey, hey, this this year I feel more than the last couple of years, you have six or seven powerhouse college teams in football. Do you think it's time to, to give the top two seeds a bye for the playoffs and then expand it to six teams? And that way, you you know, you, you got six teams really knocking it out to see who wins it all? I don't hate that thought, and thank you for the call. I know a lot of people are talking about eight. I'm not ready to go to eight yet. But six sounds a lot more feasible to me right now, especially given what we talked about earlier. Well, what I would say is if you go to eight, you can have the, all five of the power fives get an automatic bid. True. That cleans up a lot of mess. And that way you're not talking about two SEC schools getting one, two of four slots. Well, either. what I'm saying is you get five automatic bids. True. Right? Okay, good. Now you give one to whoever the top gang of five team is so yep. you don't have the annual Central Florida whiners. One, one group of five teams. At six, and then you've got two spots. Two wild so cards. here's the thing. The two wild cards, if Notre Dame is in the top five or six or whatever, give them one. they're getting one. Yeah. Nobody's complaining about it, and you still have one for – you know, in the, LSU, the Georgias of the world, or Florida, is, Georgia, right. you know, I mean, yeah, who might have earned it. To agree. me, that's why I like eight. If you're going to expand it, go to eight, make it make sense. So the, the thing about it is people say, well, and that, you know, uh, well, there might be an, uh, you know, an eight and four team that wins the Pac-12 North and then wins the Pac-12. So they're nine. OK, so what? They're probably going to they get served earned up their for somebody way. else anyway. Well, they earned their way in, though. That's that the too. thing. They clinched it by winning a divi- by winning their conference. And if you're not going to make conference championships really mean something, exactly. Get rid of conferences. What's the it, point of exactly. having exactly? Com- they said at the very beginning when they set this playoff up that conference championships were going to be taken well with a little bit more weight, and that just kind of disappeared. But my thing is make them an automatic bid so they mean something. Agreed. we got to take another break. We'll take some more calls when we come back. Stick around. 